For me, my artwork is just having fun. A lot of it was just kind of playing around in the studio. My dad's an artist, a lot of his friends were artists, so I grew up exposed to art. I never really knew if I was going to be an artist, but um, when I was about 20, about 21 years old, I started kind of tinkering around with stuff in the studio and playing with things and putting things together and started kind of come up with some ideas and just kind of went from there and just kind of has snowballed since then and so here I am. I played with Legos a lot. I still have my huge Lego collection. It's all packed up in storage and I don't know, I just always enjoyed just studying how things worked, you know, mechanically and things like that. So I just <laughs> kind of incorporated that into making things that were fun and looked cool and was kind of spontaneous, I guess. Not only am I trying to worry about form and shape, I'm trying to make things work and mechanically work. I actually found all these, a bunch of these gears up at Smith and Edwards in Ogden, actually. And I just realized that they would probably rotate if I were to put them kind of in sync with each other. I think a lot of artists take the approach of looking at things artistically and looking at form and shape. And for me, I kind of, I think I kind of approach things backwards. I think of a mechanical concept or some sort of moving element that I, you know, just by taking something apart or I'll see something and it spawns an idea and so I start putting those together and figuring out how I can make it work and rather than fine-tuning and engineering how to perfectly align things and put them together, I just kind of tack it together roughly and see if it works and if it works then, you know, I'll secure the welds and I'll make it more sturdy and then I'll just kind of go from there. I mean, there's really a lot of form follows function. My figurative pieces are kind of, rather than molding with clay or plaster or anything like that, it's kind of molding with the shapes of the found objects and sometimes I'll hammer it into shape a little bit if it sticks out a little too far in one area or something like that. If I need something to be strong, structurally sound, or moving elements, bearings, things like that, I'll, I learned pretty quick that I couldn't really rely on found objects for that because I didn't know how reliable they were, how long they'd last. So it's kind of buying new gear motors, new bearings, stuff like that, and then incorporating them in, into shapes and ideas and then bringing in neat found objects, neat shapes, things like that that add kind of the visual appeal. I think for me, the inspiration, lots of times I just, I'm thinking a lot, I'm always studying the way things work, just looking at some driving on the road, noticing cranes or the clouds or just stuff like that. And I'm always wondering, you know, what affects this or that and how things work and interact with each other. And sometimes that spawns ideas. One thing that I've enjoyed about my artwork is it really doesn't have an age range of as far as people that typically like it. It really appeals to all ages. You know, little kids will get really excited about stuff and then a really old man, you know, he'll come in and he just, he looks at the stuff and he recognizes stuff that, you know, that he used to, you know, off, you know, plowshares off of a piece of farm equipment that he used when he was 14 years old or, you know, stuff like that. I mean, they, you know, it's a lot of fun for a lot of people to just recognize the different shapes as well as the movement. My artwork is just really just kind of raw, fun, just making something out of nothing, just kind of a raw creativity of just trying to have fun and, and just kind of approach things almost like a child would, I guess. I think in doing that, that creates a really positive environment and people really kind of are attracted to the artwork because of that.